So I mentioned a game called Grimdark Future that I'm painting my Primaris for. This is a free to download complete rule set that you can get from One Page Rules, link in the description. It's a one page set of core rules with another page for universal special rules. All army lists are free on the website also, covering many model lines from various companies as this is an agnostic rule set. It's played on a 4x6 board with 5-10 to 10 pieces of terrain. These can be cover terrain which gives you a minus one to shoot in, difficult terrain, which means you can only move through it six inches at a time, and dangerous terrain, which means you roll a dice for each model in your unit or dice based on one unit's toughness. And on rolls of a one, they end up taking wounds. So keep big models away from this stuff. Armies should be as close to equal points as possible. This here is 1500 points of Prime Brothers, so it is actually quite small scale. When building an army, as long as two units are the exact copies of each other with the exact same unit upgrades, you can merge the units into to one big one. Units clusters heroes can be merged into regular units. I haven't seen a rule stating you can't have multiple heroes in one unit so you could potentially have a death ball of one troop unit and a bunch of heroes so I would suggest a house rule of only two or three. Rolling off to see who goes first you pick a longboard edge to choose your deployment zone and then deploy 12 inches from it. You are the person who will also be going first. And depending on the mission you are playing, some people like to make their own or use objective cards. The basic core mission states you place D3 plus two objectives on the board. You alternate placement of the objectives with the player going first, placing first. One marker must be placed outside of your deployment zone and all markers must be nine inches away from each other. To score an objective, you must be within three inches of it by the end of that round. The objective is then classed as seized and you are free to move away, but it can be claimed by your opponent at the end of the round if they are within three inches and you are not or you are pinned. If both your units are within three inches of the objective, by the end of the round it becomes neutral again. After placing objectives though you alternate with deployment of your units. The player going first placing first. Some units have special rules like scout which means they can set up 24 inches away from the table edge or units can be kept in ambush to deploy on the table later deep strike style. So please check your unit profiles to see how they can deploy but for the most part units will be placed 12 inches from your chosen table edge. Now every game has only four rounds. I would suggest a house rule of going to the fifth on a four plus and a sixth on a five plus to keep things interesting though. Player who goes first decides which units they wish to perform an action with and you can choose up to four. Hold which means you stand and shoot. Advance which means you move forwards and then shoot after moving, you can't shoot before moving. Rush, which is double your movement value. And charge, which is a rush action, except you move into melee range of the enemy. Once the first player has completed his action, the opponent gets to choose a model to activate. And you activate alternatively until all of your models have completed an action. Using tokens to keep track of who is activated would be very useful here as when both players are finished you count objectives and end the round. With the player who finished activating all their units first getting to go first in the next round. In terms of movement most models move six inches. If they have the slow rule they move four and if they have their fast rule, they move 9. Best rule about movement is that units have a cohesion value of 2 inches, but all of your units must stay within a cohesion of 6 inches, so no conga lines. In terms of shooting, if you have line of sight and range, you may fire all your weapons. If you have multiple weapons in a unit, those weapons can be fired at another target within line of sight and range. To hit, you count up the amount of dice the unit's weapons have. So as the unit loses models, the less attacks you get and the more ineffective 
objective they become. You roll based on the quality of the units. So Prime Brothers have a 3 plus quality. That means you need to roll 3s or higher on all your D6s. If a unit is in cover or more than 50% obscured, you add 1 to that quality roll needed. So for Primaris, that would mean they need to roll 4s instead of 3s. 1s are always fails and 6s are always hits. So if your conscripts who need 6s to hit anyway suddenly need 7s, it doesn't matter. You always roll for hits and saves regardless and 6s will always be successful. Count your successful dice anyway. Here 5 but over 3 plus and so that means your opponent has to make 5 defense rolls. They roll their dice and they have to get equal or better than their unit's defense. Primaris for example have a defense of 2 plus so only 1s will cause a wound but some of the weapons have an AP value. The AP on the plasma guns for instance is 2 so you add 2 to the defense roll required meaning now you need to roll 4s or higher on the defense dice. Counting all your fails, you lose the models based on the wounds that they have. Prime Brothers, for instance, only have one wound each. The special rule tough on the unit roster is the amount of wounds each individual model has, and this is mainly three or six, with vehicles obviously having more. Special rules, like blast, means you multiply successful hits by the number the weapon has. For example, a grenade launcher with blast 3. If the unit gets two successful quality rolls, that will cause six hits as it's multiplied by three. Deadly is when a wound is successful, you multiply the damage dealt by the number it does. For example, a last talent is deadly three. So if one wound goes through, a wound is only classed as being dealt after an unsuccessful defense roll. Three wounds are dealt to the model instead of just the one. And rending means natural rolls of six when checking for hits with your unit quality means they get AP4 to each successful six rolls. Whenever a unit loses half its starting number of models or toughness value, which is basically wounds, it has to take a morale test. You roll a single dice and have to equal or beat the unit's quality value. If it fails, the unit is classed as pinned until the end of its next activation. This means if you pin a unit, they have to stay idle for a turn, automatically fail morale tests, and only hit on sixes in melee. Be savvy with your gameplay, and that could be very deadly for your opponent, especially because of what happens in melee. So when charging, one model must move into base contact, but the others only need to be as close as possible. Really, you want all your models as close to the enemy ones as possible though, as the defender's unit, once charged, gets to move up to three inches closer, and the only models who can attack are the ones within two inches of an enemy model. The charging unit goes first, counting its attacks up based on its unit profile. Prime Brothers have one attack only, for instance, and then roll all the dice against its quality. For Marines, obviously, that is a 3 plus. Your opponent then checks all the successes against his armor to see if any get through. One thing you have to do though, is keep track of your successful wounds. Your opponent then attacks back. Your opponent then attacks back, but only if it's their first melee for the round can they strike back using their regular quality value. All subsequent combats mean they have to roll unmodified sixes for successful hits. After you've both counted wounds, the one who suffered the most has to take a morale check regardless of units lost. Only taking a morale check after going down to half wounds is just for shooting. Same as shooting now, you roll one dice against the unit's quality. Fail this roll while your units are still over half their number and you're just pinned. But fail this roll whilst they are under half and they rout off the board. The special rule fear will always add d3 wounds to your roll when determining melee. So if you do end up causing just one wound and your opponent does three, you have to hope a roll of five or six 
can save your backside and give you three extra wounds to make them take a morale check. That is the basic overview of the rules though. I do hope you check out the game and let me know if you enjoy it. On YouTube, Wylock Players and Sad and Lonely Gamer seem to cover this game in much better detail than I ever could, so check those guys out. All links in the description, and I'll see you in the next one.